after you've defined your data model. You've used at query to read it back out again and use that resulting array and some kind of Swift UI layout. Now comes the fun part, building some new UI so users can create, delete, and edit their own destinations rather than relying on samples again and again and again. Now the easiest of these is deleting data. So we're gonna start there. You can delete any data from SwiftUI by calling the delete method on a model context, passing in that object. Now in our SwiftUI view right now, we're using a regular for each loop here to iterate over all destinations passed in from our query. We can now write a very similar kind of deleting code you'd use in any kind of SwiftUI thing. So you'd have an on delete before modifier to get swipe to delete working out of the box. And so down below add samples, add a new method here called delete func even, uh, delete destinations, accepts an index set, just like regular SwiftUI code. It then loops over the index like this in index set, reads a value out from the array at the index. And here's the new part. We've got to call delete on our model context, passing in that object, delete this thing here. We'll say model context dot delete that destination. That's how you delete items in Swift data. And now we can attach a modifier to our for each to call that to get swipe to delete. So I'll say for our for each here, we'll do on delete perform. And I want to fill in the function version. There we go. Perform. No, it's going to fill out for me every time. Cool. Perform uh, delete destination. There we go. Got there in the end. Boom. It works. I can press command R, give it a try. We'll have our previous sample data there. I'm going to swipe and choose delete or to swipe the whole way across like that. The next easiest task is editing data, which means making a new Swift UI view with some various options in place. We want to make sure we have text fields so user can change a, a destination's name and details properties. We'll have a date picker so you can choose date and time they'll arrive there, plus another picker to handle priority of destination. How much do you want to go to this place? If we put all those things into a regular Swift UI form, we'll get a great layout out of the box. So press Command N, make a new Swift UI view, press Next, and call this one Edit Destination View, like that. Now, this needs to know the destination that's been chosen, which one we're trying to edit right now. And if we just wanted to read values to show things on the screen, we would say var destination is a destination like that. But here, just reading values is not enough because we want to bind them to text fields and pickers and similar. So you can actually edit the values over time. Instead of having a plain property like this, we're going to add an extra property wrapper here called at bindable, which is able to create any kind of bindings for any Swift data object. It's actually built for the Swift observation system that's new for iOS 17, but because Swift data is built on top of observation, it works just as well here too. So this property is going to be at bindable var destination is destination. And now we've got a property here. Of course, our previous struct won't build anymore. Worse, we can't just make a temporary destination and throw it around in here because Swift data won't know where to create it, where it's being stored. There's no active model container. There's no context around to make that thing in for our preview. Now to fix this, we're gonna make a custom model container by hand. I'm gonna do it in a very particular way. Because it's a preview, we don't wanna use live data. We want temporary data so we're going to make an in-memory storage area. So it means that we can create it in memory just for the previewing purposes, make changes, and they're all thrown away when the preview ends. This takes just four steps. First, make a new type called a model configuration that will tell it we want in-memory storage for our data. Second, we'll use that configuration to make a custom model container for our destination model. Third, make an example destination object with some sample data. So, and it looks realistically good on the screen 
uh, this will automatically be made inside the container we've made previously. So it works. And finally, send that object into our destination view here, along with the model container, so it'll all work nicely together. Now, we haven't done steps one and two before because they weren't required. They were done by that magical model container four thing here. But we do need them now, so we can create it by hand and customize it. So in our preview here, we're gonna say as a do block with our code in, we'll say make a configuration equal to model configuration. You can see here is stored in memory only. That will be true. Do not store this to disk in the long term. Then we'll say let container be try model container for our destination self with configurations of that configuration. And now we can make our objects here. We'll say our example is a destination with a name of example destination and details will be some meaningfully long text, simulate a good screen here. So I'll say um, example details go here and will automatically expand vertically as they are edited. Uh, so that won't be our UI, we'll do anyway. And now finally, we can do return that destination view with destination being our example object and pass in the model container too, like so. Container, boom. And then just catch any errors. So I'll say catch uh, fatal error, fail to create model container, like so. Now, it's unhappy here. It can't find these things. I'll just do uh, the, the fix it, import of data. Boom. And it should be much happier now. Yes. Okay, good. So, at this point, our code compiles cleanly again. But be very, very careful. If you had not done these two lines of code, your preview would really, really struggle. Obviously, right now, it's just, you know, hello world, whatever. There's not a lot going on here, which is fine. Uh, but... Uh, in the real thing, you want to make sure you have the configuration and container built ahead of time like that. Otherwise, it will cause problems. Your preview will just crash. Mine's failing to build the file right now. Let's go having a little uh, annoyance to itself, a little tantrum. Um, but it should be fine on your side. It compiles cleanly for sure. That's what we care about. So now you can start to fill in this view body here uh, with those things to edit our destination here. This is regular Swift UI code, nothing surprising here. It has no idea it's reading and writing the Swift data, doesn't care, it's just an object as far as it's concerned. So we're gonna say there's a form with a text field called name bound to text of dollar destination dot name. Then a text field of details with text bound to destination details. This is a multi-line field, so I'll say it has an axis of vertical, so it grows as a type. We'll make a date picker called date with selection bound to destination date. And then for priority, we're gonna use a picker, low, medium, and high. This is a separate section here because uh, segmented controls are unlabeled, sadly, in SwiftUI by default on iOS. And so we're gonna say section with a title of priority, making it clear what this thing actually means. Then we'll do a picker uh, called priority with selection bound to destination priority. And the values will be one, two, and three, uh, low, medium, and high. We'll do something slightly more interesting than low, medium, and high, because that's, that's quite dull. Uh, we're gonna say uh, meh is tag one. Then we'll do maybe for tag two and text must for tag three. Do they want to go maybe met or must? And I'll say a picker style here is segmented, so it's only one type of change options here. I'll also add a navigation title to our form, saying edit destination, and then a nav bar title display mode of inline, because we're in a detail view now. And now we can go back to our content view and make navigation work for our list. And this means placing a navigation link inside our for each. So each row inside our list is navigation link 
moving to a destination. Will preview work? Let's find out. Thinking about it? No. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it to cry by itself. Uh, over in content view, we'll make that change now. We'll say, here's our for each right now. Um, inside there, so right here, this is where we're gonna say there's a navigation link with the value of our destination and push the whole VStack inside there. We also want to add a navigation destination modifier below our nav title right here. So SwiftUI knows to move to that new editing view whenever a navigation is, is triggered. So we'll say here, there is a navigation destination for destination.self. And this thing has to take a destination and return a view. Of course, that's exactly what our edit destination view does. So I'll just do that dot in it. I should now all work correctly. Let's, let's find out. I press command R. I'll delete uh, Roam, that here, and uh, I've deleted it and I'll start, start new ones. Boom, I'll choose Naples. Excellent, Naples is there. Go back and choose Florence. Very, very nice. And this is all live data, by the way. I can say, you know, let's not go to Florence. Let's go to Verona. And now back here, boom, Verona's there straight away. So we have editing working very, very nicely at this point. Swift is taking care of the rest for us automatically. So now we have editing working. Adding destinations is really easy because we'll just insert a new empty destination to our uh, array and then make it edit, edit immediately. Just show up for editing now. This means making a handful of small changes, starting with some storage to track the path of our navigation stack. So we can store it in state here and adjust it dynamically, saying now show this thing for editing. So add a new property here in content view We'll do at state private var path is an array of destination, like that. Second, we want to bind that thing to the path of our navigation stack. So I'll say the path, this thing is dollar path. Third, we want a new method in content view that creates a new destination, add it to our model array, this thing here, destinations, in the context, and then puts it into the nav path. Show it for editing right now. So down here, we're gonna say, let's do here, func add destination. Step one, make a new empty destination. Let destination equals destination like that. Step two, we're not gonna just force it into the array. That's given to us by Swift data. Instead, we do the same thing we did before. We inserted the model context like this. We do model context dot insert destination. And then we'll make our, our path value here equal to destination like that. So we're saying make that thing be shown in our navigation stack right now. And finally, we'd add another button here in our toolbar to add new destinations. We'll say button add destination system image of plus, action of add destination, and we're done. Press command R, build and run again. I'll press plus, boom, new one appears straight away. I'll say where I really want to go above everywhere else. Let's do uh, like a Positano or a Malfi, I don't know, uh, somewhere Wonderful, uh, not position, you silly thing. Pause it, ah, sorry, it's spelling. Oh, I know, Capri, there you go. It can't compare Capri, yeah, good. Uh, and that'll appear here straight away. So you can see it as, it, as it animates, you can see it adds it, boom, down there and slides it in straight away. So adding now works great too. With that done, you can now remove this add samples code. It's not required anymore. We're now dealing with real user data.